Hey everybody, how's it going? So welcome back to Planet Coaster and of course, welcome back to World of You Muse. Now last week we couldn't help but talk about my massive Woody and this week it's time to tame another beast completely. The hill to the left of the entrance. But we've got a coaster aimed at kids this week. Keep it clean, you filthy lot. Oh, Woody indeed. Well then guys, welcome back to World of You Muse, and this is what happens when you do try and tame an unruly hill. I mean, I kind of figured that Hershey Park does an alright job at this already, so it seems kind of fitting that we are um, inspired by that. And I mean, I've also built a coaster, I've got some shops to show you, and I've just got some general ideas that we're going to talk through. So we are down here in the entrance area to start with, down by Copycat's Food and Drink, and you can see, yes, this is the hill. As you can see, the actual hill itself, I've had to tame quite a lot because of the angle of descent of pathways and stuff so i'm unfortunately going to have to take this hill down but i've got plans for this area i'm not going to tell you what they are just yet but there's a reason that this is a bridge let me know in the comments if you can guess what that may be <laughs> no surprises um but yeah so this is what i'm doing with the hill i wanted to have this idea of having steps on one side and then a gentle ramp on the other because this is quite an inclined hill now unfortunately this is going to be one of those situations where the guests are going to come in and completely ruin the illusion that we're trying to build here this is my first take on steps i do need to just do tidying up and whatever later on but this is like my first idea and this is then going to continue all the way up the left hand side and then down the right hand side here is just going to be the ramp and then you're going to have different parts where you can flip between paths from one side to the other. And then we do have some shops just that are down this side that are uh, on different little ledges. So I wanted a ledge here, a ledge here, and then of course there's one at the top here. I wanted to keep this area slightly free uh, because I wanted to have this as an access area. And that means then I can do a backstage area that's uh, sitting at the back here, have a gate here, and then that just sort of allows access into this into this plaza area. So this is kind of looking how I want it to, uh, want it to, or it's feeling at least how I want it to. I'm going to need to put a gate in here, but then we've also got the coaster. Now, if you remember back to the first episode when I said I loved how it sat on the sight line, well, I do like how this sits on the sight line. It's sort of like raised up and it does what it needs to do. I didn't want it to be a major coaster. I wanted it to be a kid orientated coaster because it felt like that's what you needed you wouldn't really want people walking right across the park with kids to go on kids rides so you put those at the front of the park right so this is what I've done here it's a Ziera Zier however you guys are going to say it different people will say it differently around the world and I know someone somewhere is going to correct me on it whatever Ziera <laughs> and then we're going to have uh, the lift hill up here so it's set to uh, 20 degrees I think and uh, six mile an hour comes down into the first curve. Now, the beauty of these coasters is they are really twisty and turny. Uh, they don't tend to focus on airtime hill. Now, what that means in game is actually the ratings are a bit rubbish. Um, but actually, for a, a coaster itself, this is pretty much the layout that you would expect. Twisty and hilly and not very fast paced. So anyway, we come around to the first uh, first corner into a bunny hop hill, into a turnaround. And then it goes underneath the track into a figure of eight uh, and then underneath again out of the figure of eight so this is what it's, it is at the top right so you go around this way into the figure of eight and then back out that way now i wanted to kill the speed so it cr not crawls but it's not pummeling over the top here uh, because you are going to have people joining the queues or standing in queues and whatever so you want to sort of reduce your uh, collision risk with stuff that might be falling from trains and whatever so it sort of makes its way around this way into a final helix and then into the brake run now just to let you know this helix is a very specific profile shape uh, so the idea here is you need to kill as much of the speed as you possibly can here and then as it enters into the final dive you uh, take it up ever so slightly so you can see it there up slightly and then it comes back down into into the helix now the train's coming around the corner so uh, it comes around into this way so you can see it's not traveling particularly fast it's not a fast paced coaster by any means but it's a kids coaster so it's going to be exciting for the for the young ones regardless right so it is what it is uh, then i've just put uh, down some supporting rides for the area so um the corrales the uh, is that called a corrales i think it is uh, a merry-go-round the whatever the, the whatever star flyer and the roctopus the roctopus doesn't get enough love so i've put down the roctopus I haven't opened it yet because it's still testing on a slightly longer ride um pattern but the roctopus is there and then sitting very at the top of the hill 
uh, this is exactly what I wanted with the chairlift. So it's it's slightly raised. It's got some pathways coming down. I wanted it to be symmetrical. So you'll see why when I do the buildings and stuff. Um, but yeah, it's going to come out this way and then down. And uh, oh, actually, I've, I've just realised I put this pathway around the wrong way. So this is supposed to come out that way and back this way. I need to fix that. But it's going to be symmetrical anyway. Um, and then it's going to be kitted out. I've just put some services underneath. I didn't want to utilize the area for shops and stuff because you're going to be sitting or standing underneath cable cars and whatever. So I just put service areas for the staff uh, that the staff can use and then be done with it. And then this is going to be a platform. So of course we're dealing with a hill, right? So the hill needs to come back down this way and I need to find a gradient back to the path along the lake, which I've now put in. So there is a reason, by the way, there's there's two reasons actually, two secret reasons um, that I'm not going to tell you about. But I need to do the grading in this <laughs> in this area. You'll see in future episodes. You're going to need to like just keep coming back. So this is how it's looking from the top. Let me do some more building, and I'll see you in a minute. Oh, and then you guys, do you remember the episode of Raygate Lake where the hill started to come to life and it looked a little bit similar to this? Yeah, that. But anyway, this is a spoiler alert for next week. Next week's coaster is going to be a proper arrow suspended coaster. And the name competition for it is going to be here. So comment your coaster name suggestions on this video. And I'm going to pick my favorite four or five. And I'm going to put them to the community vote over on the community tab. Now, you guys have got until midnight on the night that this episode goes out. So you need to be quick. Go. Go do it now. Right now. Right, right now. But going back to the park, let's talk about the history of this and the head cannon. What's going on in my head? What's, what's this? park all about now i wanted this park to feel like it had its heyday in the late 90s early 2000s mid 2000s which is why next week is the arrow suspended coaster now i've got 11 coasters planned for this park in total and apart from a couple of modern day additions they are all going to be from that era and i hope you guys are going to love it. But that also is the reason why this area feels a little bit disjointed. Because I wanted this to feel like this was the original entrance to the park. Almost like the tickets and turnstiles might be down here. Whether I put some of the graveyard of all of that down here. I'm not entirely sure yet. But this would have been the original plaza area where you've had all your shops and stuff. And then you would have funneled through this way. And then probably down to the lake if, it's, if it existed. Or at least across this viewpoint. Down to this way, etc. Now quite why they moved the entrance down here. I, I don't really know because it was only literally over here other than for space and the fact that this was a little bit of a flatter land but it is it is what it is right so that's kind of what I'm going for here a little bit of history that's going on in going on in the park so in terms of stuff that I've built or robbed from other people let's be honest most of it's robbed uh, <laughs> uh, we're going to start down here with this uh, with this little food unit so in Dollywood there is uh, a lovely lovely little uh, glass blowing um factory almost and i just love this this the, the building design i mean it actually works quite in its favor of to the other design that i had down in the main entrance area here right so this sort of like felt like it was a consistent design across this across this piece so this is what i've done in here it is going to be a food unit we've got sandwiches and water nobody is going to eat sandwiches and drink water at the theme park but hey you've got it anyway but what i did want is to have this little uh, plaza area that was undercover uh was under a roof but also completely open to the elements and this would have been probably one of the original uh, one of the original restaurants of the lake because it looks over on the lake right so I kind of wanted to retain this idea that this may have been here since the very beginning but probably wasn't that utilized um but that's why it is this sort of this sort of style I've recladded it so it's consistent in uh, in style I've said style quite a lot uh, but it's consistent in look and feel <laughs> to the other building. So it probably would have been uh, updated when they did uh, all of the copycat stuff down here. So uh, obviously it needs the makers toolkit pass and it needs lots of detailing. But this is sort of like where I'm feeling. This is the stairway. Uh, so I have, I just wanted to leave this in to show you what mess I go through every time, every time I design. So I've tidied up the pathways and I've tidied up the stairs and I've started to get a feel for how I want these to be lined off with curbs and with uh, rocks and stuff. And then I've also started to put in some of the mulch. Now I've coloured it brown so it looks like dirt and so I can then put uh, flowers and stuff in. And uh, yeah, this is kind of like what you're what you're going to be what you're going to be getting. Uh, of course, then I start the plaza areas, and uh, all of this is going to be covered off as a plaza area, so you're not going to see the paths and stuff underneath. I use this technique a lot. In fact, I use it a lot in this episode uh, because it's it's quite important. But it also does mean though that when you start doing stuff with the game that you really shouldn't do with it, you get stuff like this where guests walk through bits. 
It is what it is. It looks good from the top, right? It just looks like it, it should from the top here. So, then we have this little ice cream stall. So, Holiday Park, <laughs> we're moving to a different park, uh, has got this awesome little unit that I saw. Uh, theirs is purple and um, yellow, I think. But I thought it'd be perfect for an actual ice cream stall. So, Cosmic Cow is coming in here. Again, needs a bit of detailing on the outside. But I like how this uh, I like how, how this sits on the, on the sight line. And then inside here, yeah, we've got ourselves a nice little counter. Um, so, I've just put in a load of TMTK stuff um, and some balls of ice cream. And I've used these freezers, by the way, to hide the fact that these are actually pillars. Um, they have TMTK fence posts and they've got the, the balls on the top. So <laughs> I've used these to hide the fact that it looks a bit rubbish. Uh, but I like how this has turned out. Obviously, the ceiling is going to be here, right? So you're not going to see any of this stuff up here in the void. Uh, and you're obviously also not going to see uh, any of this. So this is what you're going to what you're going to see. And then uh, coming around here, I've made it functional by putting these in. And then this way, just some seating. I can't put seats here uh, because the path doesn't go that far. And the terrain doesn't let me put paths that far. But... It's fine. I might put a, uh, a fake picnic bench in instead so and be done with that. And then this is what you see when you look out. It's just a plaza. <laughs> it's nothing special. And then we come up this way. Uh, I think this is uh, actually quite similar to Disneyland ticket office. I'm not sure which Disneyland it is, but I saw it and I was like, oh, I like that design. I'm going to rob that because... Uh, that's what I do. Uh, and hey, at least if it's in, if it exists in real life, you can't tell me it's not realistic, right? That's kind of the thought that I'm going for. Anyway, so that I'm, I need to do some more work on this. I'm not entirely happy with it, right? But this is the kind of vibe, vibe that I wanted. I don't like that the shops are all four meters. Uh, I know there's a mod that you can get rid of the shops, but it doesn't work. Blah blah blah. blah. So we get what we're given, right? So I'm all right with this. It's it's uh, it's fun. And then we come to this one. Uh, I've used this kind of design before. I used it in Raygate Lake. Uh, <laughs> I'm robbing for my own parks. It makes a change, right? Uh, so it's coffee and donuts with this one. Again, theme makers talk it past is needed, but I just quite like how this is how this is turning out. I quite like the colours. The whole uh, brownie yellow and the pink work really well. It's like a good colour clash combination. And then I just lined it off with the white trims. Now what I'm thinking here is all of these trims would probably would have been redone when they did um, this entrance area down here, right? To make it all consistent. So that's kind of the vibe that I'm going for here is that all of the trims would have been updated and it all, all looks a little bit newer and fresher. Probably new fresh coats of paint this wouldn't be an old area well it's an old area but it wouldn't be outdated rugged and run down so uh, that's what we're going for here and then i have just continued the pathing and stuff along here i wanted to leave this in to show you uh, how it looks when i'm just doing stuff raw uh, but obviously i'm going to line this off and you'll see that it all disappears and it all makes sense like here for example these uh, steps they do actually disappear into this area here um I'm not going to show you, but they do disappear, but you can see that they're hidden. So it's all about how you can effectively hide stuff as opposed to how you can do anything else. Then we come to this way. So Hershey Park. <laughs> Back to Hershey Park. <laughs> We're going around the world in this one, guys. It's fine. Um, has this has this building. It's now a food unit, but it looks like it used to be a cable car or a monorail station or some kind of uh, transport system. So only natural that we steal it. And that's exactly what I've done. Now, I have made the planters and stuff underneath the uh, underneath the balconies so i can actually use the plaza areas and use them effectively so you can see this is what i'm doing here i'm just starting to get a feel for the plaza but this is how it's looking from the outside an old wooden building it's that same yellowy t uh, yellowy kind of color with brown uh, brown wood and then uh, orange bal balustrades or orange fencing i don't know it's a balustrade i always get corrected between a balustrade and a banister whatever someone will tell me uh, <laughs> it's this bit anyway uh so yeah i did change the path round, so it's now actually symmetrical with the queue line and then the queue line is the other side uh, i don't know if i'm going to do much more inside here i need to get the line finished so it's going to head all the way over to the lake that way right uh, so i'm going to need to get the cars and stuff in before i know what space i've got to do theme makers talk it passes and whatever but this is cool from the outside it just needs some uh, foliage and whatever and then we come to the carousel this is the first ride that would have ever been put into this park and this is why it is like this would have been touched up uh, as part of the upgrade that we had but the top was probably not touched and this is why it's all faded um i <laughs> love the design of the top of the carousel at hershey park so it's in this park of course it is and i've also intentionally left gaps in the slats where the wood may have like 
worn away over the years. It's not as flush to each other anymore. It's probably not as watertight as it used to be either. If you get a heavy storm, there's water coming through these gaps. And I like how this is. But yeah, so it's all washed out and stuff on the top. And then underneath, you've got the most awesome old carousel going. Um, I need to just do some touching up work and, and whatever along here. But uh, I am starting to get a feel for the landscape and taming this wilderness. Hey, I did it again. Uh, <laughs> so many jokes. You love it. Uh, so what I've got here is that this is overlooking what used to be the old entrance plaza. And uh, there's going to be flowers and stuff on here. So this is a hill, obviously. It's level and it comes down this way. Then I'm just going to put some foliage and stuff in here just to make it blend. But ultimately, it's a step down. Likewise, this one here is also a step down. So there would have been something up here, shops or something, uh, that's since been removed. And there's a ride that's been put in. And then this would have been the original plaza area. There would have been fencing and stuff along here. This, uh, this whole pathway would have gone up to here. But now it's planters and a ride. So that's what I'm going for, uh, going for here. I've done something similar over this way. But I don't know if I want to be this bold with this wall. I was kind of feeling that this was going to be a bit more of a natural transition, but otherwise this just creates a pad, right? And I don't know if that's the right thing to do. So that's why I've not put the mulch and the, the dirt in here yet. So uh, yeah, watch watch this space. But then this one is just nice and simple. It's just rounding it out in the dirt and uh, off you go. By the way, in case you are wondering, and I know we've already spoken about it, but I'm using the dirt along here because uh, I can hide the path covers that I use underneath the dirt and you don't have to be so precise especially if you're using something that's got a pattern you can just keep the consistent pattern bricks for example you can keep the consistent pattern without having to break it away and funneling over stuff and, and whatever so um you'll see when it comes to life right what, what I mean but yeah so I, all I'm doing here is I'm starting to line off all of my plaza area with mud so I can start putting flowers and foliage and, and stuff in over in the octopus. I put in the queue line uh, fencing, really, really simple, cheap queue line fencing. There wouldn't be much of an effort put in here. But then I've also changed the pad. So I am making it a weird random shape um, just because I can. Uh, it feels like it feels like it would be. Oh, by the way, the pad on here has changed as well. So the actual proper pad comes around here. But guests only walk this bit. So why bother? Do what I did with the chair swings. Put in some foliage. Oh, so much to talk about, right? And then... <laughs> But are you bored yet? Uh, and then here is the coaster. So uh, the station, uh, I have been very inspired by one over in Hungary. I am not even going to try and pronounce the name. It's just going to go horribly wrong. But I wanted white and pink to be the coaster. I wanted this to be a bold colored coaster because it sits like this on the sight line. Uh, it's a very, very bold thing to have for a very, very junior coaster. And it needed to have that boldness. So black, pink, white was the, the chosen colour scheme. Uh, inside the station, there's not really much that's been done. I need to do the Theme Makers Talking Pass, as you already know. Um, but I just put, started to put in some of the design elements along here and how I wanted it to be. I wanted to have windows. I didn't want it to be enclosed. And of course, it's going to have a roof. So there's the roof. And I've put the maintenance area off of this side. Now I was going to kit it out, but because of the terrain and because of how I want this bit to look and because of how I want this bit to look, I don't have the ability to decorate the inside. So this is going to be a, um, a corkscrew coaster job from Grove and the Gardens. Uh, it's just going to be representative of a maintenance area. I'll still put clutter and stuff around, but it's not going to be kitted out in inside there, I'm afraid. Um, so going back to the entrance, this is how it all looks from the main like lake area from the main plaza area i like how this is turning out especially the cable cars at the top here this is exactly as i wanted those cable cars to sit on the sight line so yeah i like how this is turning out let's see how it's finished shall we Bruh. well you know the drill by now guys is the last bit of the episode so all of the phrases are going to come out but seriously foliage has made this come to life i've got plenty of trees to show you as well so i might crack open my fourth phrase of oh that's a tree but welcome to the world's timid timberwood run poor i think that's how i say our username thank you so much for your suggestion this week you absolutely won the vote and i love the fact you're saying well i don't know who timmy is i'm like well obviously plomps is on holiday and timmy's come along as the cousin coaster it's fine it works <laughs> But, uh, yeah, I can't really do the headcanon as to why a park that owns the copyright to Plomple Pop would want to, like, rip off their own coaster and have a cousin coaster. It, for me, it doesn't make sense in my head. But, hey, do you know what? You name one and that's all that matters. And this is how it looks from the top. Guys, I love how this area has turned out, particularly as it used to be a grand area that had all of the entrance and stuff in. And it's just been since tarmacked over and left to rot. 
<laughs> I love it. And this is how the whole thing looks from this side, from the, the side of the hill. Now, unlike previous the previous episode where the view from the lake was the one defining shot of the entire build, I don't have that in this build. There's so many good sight lines. And I mean, I'm hoping that the YouTube quality police are not going to degrade this too much so you can see just how awesome these stairs look. Because, yeah, they turned out well. Uh, obviously, the right-hand side here isn't done because you know that there's going to be a coaster coming this week. It didn't feel right for me to decorate it to then have to repurpose it next week, right? So I've just left it as it is. But, guys, look, this hill is awesome. Like, it, it, it feels just similar enough to Hershey Park to be Hershey Park. But it feels like it's got its own personality to be this uh, to be this park. So, yeah, I am chuffed with how this, how this is. We'll take a tour of that in a moment. Let's go back to uh, Timberwood Run. So here we go. Here's uh, Timmy's Timberwood Run. You get an awesome view from the plaza. I like how this is so open and so just sad. <laughs> Especially given that it used to be the entrance area. But it works, right? This whole sight line honestly, honestly works. Uh, and then inside the actual coaster itself, remember that this would have been around since the 90s. It's probably gone through a few facelifts and stuff since then, you know, a few coats of paint and whatever. But we've got over overgrowth. And I wanted to make sure that where the track is, you don't get too much overgrowth. And I wanted this to feel like it was well kept, but allowed to grow. So that's why we've got this uh, got this going on. And then the queue line itself doesn't need to be long because it's only a kid's coaster. So uh, it is it is what it is what it is. But yeah, I like how this turned out from like the sight lines. I keep coming back to this plaza and going, yeah, this coaster sits nicely. This is a good kid's coaster. Uh, by the way, speaking of good to bad, uh, Rototron has a name, Rototron, and it's now got disgusting colours. <laughs> and I wanted this to feel like it's a bit of a forgotten ride. So it's faded, you know, like it's purple and green. Why is it purple and green? Well, it just is. It's purple and green. Make, make peace with it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I wanted it to be a bit faded and I wanted it to be a bit gross. And I wanted it to be a complete mismatch with the colour of the railings. I, I wanted you to question everything about this ride. And I've satisfied that, I think. I like it. Uh, and then we're going to come across to Seastorm. Not so confused. It's not such an identity crisis going on here. Uh, but I have changed its colour. It's now red and blue. Uh, <laughs> it looks so good. Uh, I, I completely forget how good the, rota the octopus is in-game. Um, and I love the queue line poking through. It's just a cattle pen of hell. It really is. Um, now, I've decided, I'm going to talk about this like throughout the entire series, but I've decided that I need to use blank space more. So that's why there's no flowers and stuff here and here. Uh, because we're going to be using quite a lot of foliage. We're going to be using quite a lot of stuff in this park. So you need blank space to allow it to breathe. That's why this plaza area is also the way it is. I could have gone all out and kitted this out with all sorts of theming and all sorts of loveliness, but it needs dead space. And that's but, you know, it's used effectively. So, uh, yeah, I like it. And then coming across to Starflyer, this is another sight line that I like. Again, it's using blank space on the top here. I wanted this idea of having a lush garden at the bottom and then probably a little bit of mud or well-kept grass or something at the top here. But ultimately, it creates that juxtaposition, you know, remembering that this probably has used to be a shop or something up here. So it's retaining those original features. Uh, but, yeah, I like how this is i like that it's elevated it's just it, something different to look at it's not just a flat park and again we need to try and tame the wilderness right so we're doing an all right job i think uh, and then we're going to come up to the merry-go-round so i've just kitted out all of this with foliage and stuff there's not really much that's changed uh, i you'll probably spot some gaps and whatever that's because i sort of stopped doing the plaza area uh, because i think i might and i might need to change it in the next episode so i was like well i'm going to stop doing work on it for now but i'll touch it up later but you get the gist right so you get if i go this side where you can't see the gap uh, you get the gist of what i'm trying to achieve this idea of the plaza area and uh, how it looks relatively new because this probably would have been cleaned or something most recently. But uh, yeah, I like I like it. I like it. There's going to be something coming here, by the way. Uh, spoiler alert in the future episode. Um, it's going to be a building, but I don't quite know what the building's purpose is going to be yet. It's not going to be a ride, but it will be definitely uh, definitely a building. Coming over to the cable cars then, this is uh, where the cable cars are sitting. Nothing has happened in here since the previous update. Uh, was it? What's the sign in there last update? Maybe the sign's new, uh, but that's it. Because <laughs> I need to wait for the course to be completed, like the, the actual layout to be completed before I can sort of do the TMTK stuff in here, so it's fine. 
And then this is this view of the hill, so uh, you get a pretty, pretty decent view down of trees, uh, but you do get a good view of the lake from across here. And remember, oh, I'm going to fight with the camera now, aren't I? Uh, and remember that you've uh, got to see some other coasters in this area as well. So this isn't going to be the only view you're going to get. But you do get this really nice little uh, sight line down to the down to the lake and what's going to be. And then, of course, you've got the, the first drop of the, uh, the, the woody going on. And then, yep, I knew I was going to fight with the camera. And then this way is going to be another um, another coaster for us to uh, for us to look at. Right, so if we do this, we're going to come this way. And this is the area then that's got all of the fries and the coffee. Uh, nice little quiet, cosy area. Just, uh, yeah, not very busy at all. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's looking a bit sad and sorry for itself. Um, in fact, I'm going to use sad and sorry quite a lot, but it's not. It's going to be well looked after. This is a well-budgeted park. Um, then, of course, we've got the ice cream place. And uh, I realised, by the way, in the previous update that I'd cut myself off here. So disabled users, wheelchair users, had no access to ice cream and this restaurant. Um, so I fixed that. I've managed to put some, uh, some plaza in here. So now you'd access it from this side. So you come up the hill and access it from this side. So uh, I have <laughs> I have thought about our, our disabled friends. Um, and then inside here, there's a, there's a few touching up pieces I need to do. But I need to do the coaster that's coming in the next episode because I need to sort of bring some of those design elements into here. So, uh, but this is the, the this is the ultimately the finished piece inside here and um, we've got our our unit so this is how it looks with the ceiling and stuff i need to put lights and whatever in here yet i haven't i haven't uh, done that pass so uh, it's fine done uh, there we go and this is the the big one so well, i say the big one this is uh, a, a special thing so i promised <laughs> i promised fussy you know the person who does all of our um imagery and thumbnails and has done the intro videos and stuff. I promised that I was going to dedicate a restaurant and uh, in Grosvenor Gardens, and I did it, but it wasn't very good. Let's be honest. So this is my this is my thank you. Um, and if we come in here, there we go. You can just now see that uh, kitted out, and it looks good. This is supposed to be a pretty classy restaurant with a view out to the lake. There we go, and the coasters and stuff that are going to be here. You're going to have an awesome awesome view. Uh, and if we look in here, I asked Fussy for a strap line for the entire restaurant and that is fresh as in fresh fresh so <laughs> i love it it's perfect <laughs> so uh, that's where we're going and then of course you've just got the uh, you've got the logo and whatever the logo by the way the actual top typography is designed by fussy the blue f was a, a request a particular request i hope i've chosen the right blue but that was a uh, that was a request and yes just one more look up the hill Ah, oh, it just looks so, so, so good. Uh, and guys, I've got one more thing to show you. And I'm so excited to show this to you. Uh, because whilst all of this, all of this that you're seeing now is coming together, something landed in my inbox and it's changed the world. I'm, so, I'm egging this up because it deserves to be egged, egged up, right? Look at this. Spike has delivered a sign and it is perfect. It just encapsulates everything that a park would have been big Everything that a park would have been when it was big in the 90s and 2000s is just the perfect font, the perfect colours, the perfect amount of... I'm going to say jank, but that's probably that sounds like it's being rude towards the sign because the sign is awesome. So guys, can I please get a thank you and some love in the comments for, uh, for the sign because it's incredible. And yes, yes guys, it lights up. So uh, let's just quickly show you that at night. Look at that. It's brilliant. It's just perfect. I love it. It's just, yes. This I did tell you that this park was going to come to like have a personality. And this is the personality that is developing. So this is three episodes in. We've got the entrance area here. We've got the woody over here. And now we've got some hill uh, stuff over here. Next episode, we're going to see a coaster in here. And then we're going to start moving back this way with all of our 90s favorite coasters. So in a moment, we're going to go for a ride on the world's saddest... <laughs> junior coaster the guys thank you so much for getting to the end of this uh, episode i really do, do do appreciate it you know what to do leave your likes leave your comments leave your name suggestions for the arrow coaster leave some love for spike do what you need to do on the video please uh, because you know it all helps out so guys until we speak again please look after yourselves i'll see you next week Bye bye